Hi, this is Patrick Altmeyer. I'm gonna. This is part two of BuddyPress and WordPress multi-site install. As you can see, right now it has the basic setup, and I can log in, but nobody else can uh, create a user account or their own domain. And I want to show you how to do that. First of all, you got to log back in, and this is going to change because it's going to show you how you can um, add a new user right there. Okay, this is me. I'm going to go to my site. I'm going to go to Network Admin. We're going to go to Settings and Network Settings. Okay, right here it has Registration as Disabled. What you're going to do is you're going to, um, this setting is if you just want uh, users to be able to register but not create websites, you, and you can always tell them to contact you to if, uh, and give you their, their um, website. So that's important. This is login users who registered, you registered manually may now create their own websites and this one is if you want them to be able to automatically log in and create their own website. So I'm going to do that one. And of course they're going to get an email to let them know that they have a new website. Now allow site administrators to add new users to their site ver, uh, via the add new page. Yes, they're not going to be able to get in here, which is the network admin, but on their own website, they're going to be the administrator of their own website so they can do what they want to their own website. Okay, now here, if you don't like certain email addresses, you're getting spam, you can ban them. And uh, you're not allowed to register these sites, separate names by spaces. Oh, cool. And then these are uh, bad email, one domain per line. So you can ban email domains. So you can actually ban a gmail.com if you want. If you want to ban domains from right site registrations, one domain per line. Okay, now we're on to the next one. These default settings are the greetings they're going to get when they uh, install. These are fine. This is going to be the first post they create. And then under first page, what I would recommend is typing in something like this. This is a default page. I recommend using a page for a sitemap only or an about page with your information. All new products and posts should be on a post page. That's about it. And the first comment is, this is what a first comment looks like. Or this is what a comment looks like. Okay, that's it. Leave these blank. 1500 kilobytes is more than enough. And you want to be able to enable them to see plugins. You have to install them all. But that way, there are certain plugins they can add and activate and deactivate if they so desire. Okay, sorry about the background interruption. And then we hit save changes. And now we log out. Let's just go to uh, network setup real quick. Okay, we've already done this in the first video just to verify. Now I want to log out. I want to return to the home page. Okay, now see how it says you can create an account to get started and you can log in? So we'll go to the create account page. Now see how it asks them for a username and then the um, and then their name? Uh, well, the thing is that with the username, you got to be careful and I want to you want to write a little excerpt on the about page and you know how to get started is that their username is going to be their domain name. So if their username was, let's say photography, their domain would be photography.proteinshakesandvitamins.info. So let's say they want to have uh, stomach exercises and they named it, their username was Stomach Exercises. It would be stomachexercises.proteinshakesandvitamins.info. So you got to make sure that what they have works. Because the big uh, website I'm going to create is called artistspot.com. So they would like to say uh, Jenny 
dot artistspot dot com or uh, chalk artists dot you know artistspot dot com um, painting on canvas dot you know I mean whatever it is but you want to give it a good name if you want to give it a store name like Jenny's Arts dot artistspot dot com that's but I hear it's protein shakes info dot com because I'm going to create a bunch of different um, you know websites on different brands of uh, of uh, protein shakes like uh, I'm going to create an optimum nutrition one which makes excellent protein shakes fit mixer so it would be optimum nutrition dot protein shakes and vitamins dot info and print and fit mixer dot protein shakes and vitamins dot info that's what it's going to be and so here's their username their name their email and then here it says blog details yes I like to create a new site if they don't do this, they just get a username and then they can log in and do whatever they want to do with their own stuff. But here, if they create a new a new site, it's then they get their website, then they can log into their own website and have users log in directly to their own website too. Well, the part B wasn't really that complicated. It's pretty simple. You could see how it was easy to set up. And now you have your activity. So if there's any other websites here, posts and stuff, it'll show up here. Here I'll show you a bunch of the new blogs. Here's mine. Visit the site, which is nice. You can create groups so if people want to discuss exercising or uh, nutrition or anything, because I'm saying this because of this site. And then a list of members. This is members only, not their websites. The uh, blogs is a website, because each website they're going to call it a blog. And then a sample page that says this is what a page would be, then you can leave a reply. Hi there, uh, I'm a bike messenger by day, blah, 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 blah. This is a page, that, um, the sample page is basically explaining yourself. This is Patrick Altmeyer. Thanks for watching.